Thank you very much for the invitation to come here. It's always a pleasure to come back to Lumini. Uh, first, let me uh, state what the general theme of the talk is. So, um, you've seen this before. Moduli spaces of local systems on complex algebraic varieties. should have interesting geometry. So, uh, and there are thousands of talks given on this subject, papers written about it, um, but I couldn't resist to, to make a bit of propaganda for myself. Let me give a new result in this direction. Um, that doesn't really have anything to do with the title here, but Here's the first year. So let C be a smooth projective curve over the complex numbers of genus greater or equal than two. Then the space of representations of the fundamental group at a fixed base point into GL R, C, is a variety with at most rational singularities. <clears throat> so in fact, we know what the fundamental group is, so we can write this more explici explicitly. This is the, uh, the complex points of this. This is an affine variety. The complex points are given by G tuples, G couples of matrices, Xi, Yi, in GLRC, such that, that the, such that the product of the multiplicative commutator of each pair is the identity matrix. So well, the new part here is the rational singularities part. It was proven by Carlos Simpson in the 90s that this is indeed a variety. It in fact, is normal and complete intersection. So um, it also has this bound on the complexity of the singularities. Now, why is this interesting? This provides an example to this general theme because of the following corollary that is completely group theoretic. So this implies the following theorem. If n is greater or equal than three, then there is just a real constant C, positive, a natural number M zero, such that for every rank R greater or equal than R, uh, sorry, this is a rank here, R0, for every rank R greater or equal than R0, <coughs> the number of isomorphism classes of irreducible complex representations of rank of dimension smaller or equal than R of, and this is the surprising part, S, L, N, Z is smaller or equal than C, R squared. So, this is completely group theoretic. 
We know if you replace Z here by uh, a finite field, we know by Delin-Lustig theory how to address the reducible representations. For SLN Z, we actually don't know how many they are. We know by Margulis rigidity that these are finitely many, but we don't know exactly how many. So this is currently the best bound. And in fact, the step from here to here is not due to myself, it's due to Eisenbad and Avni. Who's, um, so, there is a, so they also done the following bound before. Instead of two here, 22. So it turns out that representations of fundamental group, even for smooth projective curves, is very much related to group theoretic statements like this. So that's an illustration of the general theme here. Now, today's theme is different. Today's theme, and I would like to phrase it as follows. Not only the moduli spaces of local systems are interesting, but any other naturally defined subset. So any, and any here is in quotation marks, any natural defined subset of moduli spaces of local systems should also have interesting geometry. Or perhaps even better, the today's theme that also relates with this is try to prove results that are a little bit better than what Simpson has done. So again, this talk is based in general, trying to generalize some results of Simpsons to a more general setup. Oops. So from now on, this is joint work with Botong Wang. <clears throat> and it's very much related to the talk by Ellen and O earlier. So let me start with absolute sets of local systems. And I'll give a definition for this. So first of all, um, we're, going to we're going to start with X being a smooth, complex algebraic variety. We have the variety of representations of the fundamental group at some fixed base point, rank R representations. And this is an affine variety, affine scheme actually. By, uh, uh, by acting via conjugation, we have a group action on this scheme and we can take the GIT quotient of this and we get the so-called Betty moduli space of local systems of rank R on the underlying analytic um, variety manifold. So this is this guy here, quotient by GLRC. So uh, this is an affine uh, variety. So this is the same as the spectrum of the ring of invariants um, of the coordinate ring here. So this is also an affine scheme. So we'll be looking at this Betty moduli space. The complex points of this moduli space are the semi-simple complex local systems 
of rank R on in the analytic topology. For example, in rank one, these two spaces are the same because there's no, the conjugation doesn't do anything then. And this is an algebraic group. You can, move, you can tensor two rank one local system and you get another rank one local system. And in fact, this is the home from the uh, first homology group of X with coefficients in Z to C star. We've seen that earlier today. So it is C star, it is a complex affine torus, C star to the first Betty number times if there is some torsion here, you also get a finite abelian group here. So it's finitely many copies of a complex affine torus. So it's, it's easy to understand. Here's the definition. And this is largely inspired by Simpson. I'll tell you later what the difference is with his definition. R. So this is now X in addition quasi projective besides smooth. We would like to define absolute sets in the Betty moduli. So I'm looking at subsets here. In fact, I'm looking at subsets of the complex points here, I'm, but I'm going, going to skip writing complex points. So this is absolute. And we are taking something that is constructible. Um, and let's say it's constructible and defined over Q bar. So S start is a, up is a Q bar constructible subset here. Uh, and we call it absolute if for every automorphism of the complex numbers, <coughs> there exists a sigma, and S sigma should live in the Betty moduli of the conjugation of your variety. And I would like to say that the, this guy should correspond, but again, as, uh, as in, the, in the talk from before, you can't really start conjugating the topology here. You destroy, by conjugation, you destroy completely the topologies, so you have to do something else. And what Simpson did is to look at the Deram version of this. So he constructed some moduli spaces by embedding the variety into something smooth, projective, with a complement simple normal crossing divisor, and you look at logarithmic flat connections there, he constructs a moduli space of those, and there's the Riemann-Hilbert morphism that looks, that, uh, so this, this is all complex points here, you look at the, this underlying analytic variety here, and there's an analytic morphism to this Betty moduli. This happens to be a biholomorphism if X is projecting, but it's not so necessarily if X is not projective. However, this is very algebraic here, so everything is defined algebraically, so now you can start conjugating by sigma, and you end up to to the Deram version of this moduli space. So the idea now is that this guy that you follow up via this diagram should also be Q bar constructible uh, for all such conjugations. So there exists a sigma Q bar constructible such that S sigma is RH P sigma 
RH inverse S. Okay, so there are some differences with the original definition of Simpson. First of all, the definition of Simpson was done in the case when X was smooth projective. So here we are all already quasi-projective. Um, second of all, in that case, he also assumed that um, the inverse image by this analytic biholomorphism in that case should also be constructible. Uh, we don't assume this, but we can prove that in the projective case, that's already automatic from these conditions. And the, the third thing is that uh, Simpson also has a condition on, uh, on, on the, so the absoluteness in Simpson's term also involves an extra condition in terms of the Higgs moduli space. We do not deal with Higgs moduli spaces at all. So that condition we don't really uh, deal with uh, in this talk. The only thing is if the rank is one, then that condition, even in the quasi-projective smooth case, is actually superfluous. And that's already some more or less essentially contained in Simpson's paper. <laughs> All right, so that will be the definition of absolute sets for us. So I'm going to state a theorem now, which illustrates the today's theme of the talk, but the theorem is very hard to make Precise, so it will be somewhat vague. I hope I got all my Okay To keep in mind with my notes, I should make this definition three <clears throat> So X smooth complex algebraic variety, F, a function from the Betty moduli of X, the complex points of that. I will most of the time just leave out the complex points from there, but that's what I'll be talking about, to Z. And you can think of Z as the moduli, Betty moduli of a point. The ranks, or maybe, yeah, put that in, into some bijection with N. Um, yeah, let me write N, doesn't really matter. Such that this is a composition of, and here's the vague part, any naturally, any natural derived maybe functor defined over Q bar, and by derived functor I mean you look at the derived category with of complexes with constructible cohomologies, the bounded derived category of complexes with constructi constructible, constructible cohomology and complex coefficients. Then, for all K, the inverse image of K is an absolute Q bar constructible set. So basically, everything that you can lay your hands on, everything that you can construct, you can construct with your hands will be of that type. All right, so this has actually been proven by Simpson in 93 when X is smooth projective, and for some functors. So what we do here is to put all these functors in. Now in practice, it's, we cannot really define any. So what we have, we have a, we took all the functors that we could think of and we proved the statement for, for those functors. So I'll just mention, there's the usual functors uh, there's, a, there's the shift by an integer, there's the truncation factors, the cohomology of a, uh, of a, co of a complex, the, um, the perverse truncation factors, the perverse cohomology of a complex, F inverse, F upper shriek, RF lower star, RF lower shriek, all those guys. 
nearby cycles, vanishing cycles, derived tensor products, derived R homes, duality, Verdier duality, intermediate extension functors, all those, anything you can generate via compositions of those, fiber products of those. So yeah, it's everything that we could, we could, have, think, we could have think of. Um, okay, so how do you try to prove such a thing? I already dropped, if you notice from the statement, the quasi-projective part. That's because the whole thing is to extend constructibility and absoluteness beyond moduli. So for example, to subsets, so where S is not necessarily a subset of the complex points of the Betty moduli, but to subsets of the objects of the derived category with uh, constructible sheaves up to isomorphisms. Then show that each functor you can think of preserves the notion of constructible. Once you have the notion of constructible sets, you also automatically have the notion of constructible functions and the other way around. So then they show each functor you can think of preserves these two notions. by pullback. Okay, so let me tell you a bit how we do that. Okay, so absoluteness, so remember now we want to extend the notion of absoluteness to subsets in here. For that is easy, we use instead of the moduli spaces, we use the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence on derived categories. So Riemann-Hilbert correspondence between the bounded derived category of regular holonomic DX modules to the bounded derived category, category of complexes with constructible cohomology on X. So we can form a diagram precisely as there by now with the derived categories instead of modulized. So that, so then that means the only thing that remains is to define the notion of constructibility or Q constructibility over some smaller fields. So for constructibility, here is the, the crucial definition, it's very naive. So a subset of the of objects of the derived category of constructible of complexes with constructible cohomology up to isomorphisms is called constructible. Let me skip the definitions of Q bar constructible. If for every regular finite type C algebra, R, and for every object FR in the bounded derived category of complex with constructible cohomology 
on x with coefficients in R now, the set of maximal ideals in spec R such that fr twisted with r mod m belongs to S is constructible in the classical sense. So that's, this played in a naive role of families for us. So let me note that if you want a regular functions out of uh, uh, derived categories, out of categories, then you really need to talk about moduli spaces, stacks, But what we're after here, we're after constructible functions, which is, it's less rigid than that. <coughs> so for constructible functions out of categories, the way we deal with this issue, we, so we, you need something much less, much less than that, so we develop a framework for constructing constructible functions. And I mean, we have a name for these things, unispaces. It, it's much less than a stack. It's just, uh, yeah, th that's not, it's not very difficult. But the idea is that we have now a way to generate classical, module, classical constructible functions on varieties like moduli from derived categories, which I don't think has been done before. So we have a moduli free way of generating classical constructible functions. Okay, so uh, what's the upshot about this? absolute sets. They should satisfy a lot of geometric, nice geometric things. So let me write down a conjecture. Again, this is inspired by Simpson. Simpson. We have the following conjecture, number five. Every absolute few bar constructible subset of the Betty moduli. contains an absolute Q bar point. Every absolute Q bar point is of geometric origin. Is a, so it has to be a semi-simple local system. And yeah, so what, what, what we think we should happen is an analog of the so-called Andre Ort conjectures for Shimura varieties, but now in this more topological setup. And there is one, so the next conjecture, maybe it's a bit speculative, but it's really, well, let me just put it as a question here. Um, every irreducible, component of the Zariski closure of any possibly infinite set of absolute Q bar points is an absolute Q bar closed subset
of some moduli space, beta moduli space, but perhaps for a different variety, a different rank, which is still isomorphic over Q with the one that you started with. So this is not really clear what, what kind of a conjecture to make in higher ranks for, for these things yet. Now, semi-simple local system of geometric origin. What does this mean? So, yeah, maybe I should write down. Actually, I changed my mind. I will, I, will, I will not write down precisely what this is. Let me just say this. Semi-simple local system of geometric origin is something that is obtained from the constant shift on a point via usual operations. And I could list the operations that there, but let me not try to do that. Yeah. We, we, we all seen at some point this definition, I think. Uh, I, I would like to call it, instead of geometric origin, I would like to call it of constant origin. We'll see why later, because I want to say something about non-constant origin. Now, this conjecture here, okay, if it's true, will give a very easy conceptual explanation why the full decomposition theorem holds if you know it for the geometric local systems. So let me state the decomposition the theorem. So if f from x to y is a proper morphism, of complex varieties, L a um, semi-simple, let me say, a local system on a smooth, locally closed sub-variety Z in X such that, and there's two cases, then there's the, the, there's the first case ever proved, um, semi-simple of geometric origin. So this is in the paper by Berlin, by uh, Bellinson, Bernstein, Berlin, and Gauber also contributed to that. Or the full decomposition theorem is for any semi-simple local system. Then, RF lower star of the intersection complex on uh, the closure of Z, of Z of L has a nice decomposition in terms of the perverse cohomology sheaves of itself. appropriately shifted, and moreover, each one of these guys is a semi-simple perverse shift. 
<clears throat> so the, f the full decomposition theorem was proved much later after the uh, geometric origin case by uh, Mochizuki, Takuro Mochizuki, um, using, using complex techniques and also pro proven by arithmetic techniques by um, Böckle, Kare, Dreamfeld, and Gaitskori. So that's by arithmetic techniques. Um, so why, so, so what, what, what does our conjecture do in this case? What would it do? Let's see. I forgot which one was which. This one. So here's an easy result. Our conjecture, in fact, the first two sentences there in the conjecture only, plus the decomposition theorem for the geometric local systems implies the full decomposition theorem. And the proof is easy. You can rephrase this condition here by some sort of vanishing between the x, x between these perverse sheaves, and that is a combination of functors from our list. So, in fact, so what what do you do? The good set of local systems on on Z such that the dt holds for it is absolute Q closed. In fact, it's even defined over Q, but that doesn't really matter. Absolute Q constructive. In fact, it's Q closed. Um, and it contains, by the assumption here and the conjecture, and it contains all geometric points. By the conjecture, the geometric points are the absolute points, so it contains all absolute Q-bar points. It contains all of them, so it has to be the full space. So, yes. It's part of the first, so for this, you only need the first two statements. Conjecture. Yeah, conjecture. by the conjecture, yeah. Okay, so you only need actually the first two statements in the conjecture for this. So uh, this, that's the trick with this. Okay, so I have to give some theorem now because these are only conjectures so far. So the conjecture holds for a rank one and cases when the rank one basically gives all the ranks. So complex affine tori or abelian varieties. So this is with or here. So as an immediate corollary, you get 
a new proof of the full decomposition theorem of, uh, let's say, of the Z decomposition theorem for all semi-simple local systems of this origin, namely, instead of constant shift at the point, take any of the local systems allowed here, for example, rank one local system on any smooth variety, and then apply the usual operations as in the definition of geometric points, and for those, you get a new proof of decomposition theorem, um, so of star origin, assuming only BBDG. Now, the reason why we're able to prove this for rank one is because we have a good description of these sets in rank one. So, theorem seven follows for the following one. If X is a smooth complex algebraic variety, S a subset of rank one local systems on X that is absolute Q bar constructible, then S is obtained from finitely many torsion translated uh, affine subtori via um, intersection union and taking complement. Okay, so how many minutes I have left? Zero? 15, ah, great. I can give now examples of uh, absolute sets of rank one local systems. So let me see which one. So by this theorem, anything that I can, can construct in rank one will be of that type, coming from torsion translated sub tori. So here are examples. So these are examples of absolute sets in, M, in rank one. The first example, the set S0, we do the following. We look at rank one local systems. So let's say we have, we're in the situation where we have a function F, a regular function. And we fix, we fix some point X here in the zero locus of F. So we're looking at local system on and let's say f of x goes to zero. We're, we're looking at rank one local systems on the base here. Of course, that's the same as given a complex number, no zero complex number, such that, and I'm gonna write a bunch of functors here, h, the cohomology of the stock of the nearby cycle of F applied to L to the pullback of L is not zero. Well, this is a composition of functors that I wrote there, some condition. So this is, in fact, absolute Q closed. 
I will not write absolute anymore, but this is absolute. So in particular, so this, these are roots of unity here. So actually this is the same as the monodromy theorem, which states that the eigenvalues of monodromy on the cohomology of the Milner fiber of uh, regular functions are roots of unity. So you see that this, this that statement is some kind of uh, multifaceted generalization of the monodromy theorem. So this is equivalent with the monodromy theorem. Yeah, so the, 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 what I'm trying to say is that this statement here, together with the one here that I'm erasing, generalizes many of the partial results that were uh, present in the literature up to this point. But what I'm saying, so Q close means a priori some finitely many points, or what does that mean? Yes, well, it, it is. Why? I mean, how do you do it's a closed subset of the moduli space and a closed subset of C star. It's just a. Um, most, yeah, so uh, most of, yeah, that, that's a good question. That's a good question. Most of the functors that we deal with in this list of uh, many functors that we have will actually, are actually natural transformations between <laughs> categories. And that is what helps us with the closed condition. What, I'll, I'll tell you what functor is not preserving, is not gonna give us closed condition. It's anything that has to do with perverse <coughs> truncations. For example, the intermediate extension functors that will not preserve, that will not be, uh, th that's something, well, I will write it down immediately, an example like that. Be, well, the moduli space is just C star. Yeah, but there is no group structure in It is absolute Q-closed. And absolute, by the main theorem here in rank one, is coming from finitely many torsion translated subtori. There are no <laughs> subtori to talk with, so just a torsion <laughs> points in C star. Torsion points in C star are roots of unity. So it's, 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 that's the only thing that it sees. So I just wanted to, to point out that the classical monodromy theorem is a particular case. Another particular case is the following subset of rank one local systems such that the dimension of some cohomology is greater or equal than a fixed number k. Again, this is Q closed, absolute Q closed. So this will be a finite union of torsion translated subtori. So this was an older, so this is, remember X is smooth quasi-projective in my, uh, smooth, not necessarily quasi-projective. So that's a generalization of Simpson's theorem that uh, we, we've seen before. Um, but we can go beyond this, we can also tensor by something, let's say L tensor a fixed complex here, this, uh, in the statement that I erased, I said that the, any functor defined over Q bar, so by that I meant, for example, if F is a local system that is not defined over Q bar, then that condition will not be satisfied. But let's assume, let's assume for example, uh, let me just say what this should be. You get Q closed here if F is, for example, underlying a mixed Hodge module of geometric origin. If F is just a, a semi-simple perverse sheaf of geometric origin, then, then you get Q bar closed. But if it's underlying a mixed Hodge module of geometric origin, which means whatever you get from the uh, constant mixed Hodge, uh, constant Hodge module on a point by all those operations, 
then, then you get actually something defined over Q. And that is nice because now you have a Galois of Q bar of, over Q action on this, so you get a corollary. You get, you get the following du duality kind of statement that is very concrete. That the ith cohomology on X of a rank one local system tends to such a complex is the same as the, uh, at least the dimensions, as the uh, ith cohomology of the dual of L. Tensor F. Another statement, and this was something that was not, um, uh, Simpson's method could not handle the following statement, is intersection cohomology. So jump loss for intersection cohomology. So L rank one such that dimension of the intersection, ith intersection cohomology on some x bar, and I have to write what that is, of L tensor F greater or equal than K. Now, again, I'm gonna take F as here for simplicity. So this is Q constructible. Here we cannot put closed. That's, that's definitely not true. So here x bar, so you have an embedding of x into x bar um, this is just some locally closed embedding. So again, by this theorem in the corner, this comes from finitely many torsion translated subtora, but now you have to take, you have to allow complements as well. Um, but again, you, get, you, get, you, you obtain a concrete statement, which I think is new. I have not seen it anywhere, some kind of duality, like before, so this generalizes S2, that the dimension of the ith intersection cohomology group on X bar of L rank one local system tensor F as before is the same as the dimension with the dual of L or the inverse. So that's a concrete statement. So this, this statement seems new or at the time when we proved it, even for, for the case when F is the constant shift on Well, in that case, there's not much to say. Yeah. Anyway, that, that, that's, that's still new. Another example is we consider the following setup. X, the complement of uh, some simple normal crossing divisor in a smooth variety. actually the complement of any divisor. It doesn't need simple normal crossings. So it's a hypersurface. So this is open embedding. And then you look at the rank one local systems on X such that the length of the push forward is prescribed. R, F, lower star, N is the dimension of X. That's a perverse sheaf, R, F, lower star of that will also be perverse, and you ask about the length as a perverse sheaf. That's a notoriously difficult thing to compute, the length of a perverse sheaf. But if we put them all together like this, turns out we can say something about it. Yeah, this is a uh, Q-constructible set, absolute Q-constructible set. So, um, uh, again, the, the, we have this characterization for this. So this is, this was not initially in the long list of functors, length here was not initially in this uh, long list of functors, so that we had to do some work to prove constructability with, so this is a result with 
Uh, sorry, J, yeah. Uh, this is a result with uh, Gatti, <coughs> Liu, and Wang. So this is just a sample of what, what we should dare to write down, but again, any combination of things will work. For example, another set will be a set of rank on local systems such that, let's say you have a map from your variety, smooth variety to another smooth variety. You consider the Leray filtration on the cohomology of your local system here, coming from the Leray spectral sequence. And you, you put those, again, you prescribe some some dimension for the Leray filtration, so for a certain piece of the Leray filtration on a certain cohomology. Again, those will be uh, absolute Q, const Q bar constructible. Um, and here's another new result for rank one local systems. Let me state it here. And with this, I'll finish. With the same proof as for theorem six, you can get the following. Corollary nine. Let's say now J, X is smooth. J is a uh, smooth compactif gives a, an open embedding to a smooth compactification. So X bar is projective. And now the complement is indeed a simple number crossing divisor. Then for every rank one local system on X, we have the Leray spectral sequence which computes the cohomology of L. And that Leray spectral sequence with E2 term HP X bar R J lower star L, RJQ lower star L, converging to the cohomology of L degenerates at E3. And the reason is that this statement has been proved by Deligne using mixed Hodge structures for the case when L was torsion, that may, meaning a uh, rank one local system of geometric origin. But now, again, by the conjecture five, which is a statement, which is a, is a theorem for the rank one case, and by the same proof here, you get the same statement because this, this condition here of the generation, again, becomes a mixture of all the functors that were, of some functors that were used with. So it seems like a, a, this statement is also new, according to Delin. Which, and the proof of this, again, does not involve any more mixed structures, that's all. <laughs>